As autumn starts to take hold across the British Isles, it can be really tempting to go out to woodland landscape locations and photograph lots of wide-angle vistas. But at this time of the year, it's often some of the finer little details that stand out to us, whether it's a conker, an acorn, a berry, or even just one of these individual little oak leaves. Beautiful as they are, taken in a wide-angled shot of a woodland landscape, they're equally as beautiful, just picked out as a detail in a single photograph. So in this episode of the basics of photography from Yorkshire Photo Walks, we're going to delve deeper into the woodland and find intricate details within the wider landscape as we venture into the wonderful world of close-up and macro photography. We should probably start off by explaining the difference between the definition of a close-up and a macro photograph. First of all, a close-up photograph is often a close-up detail within a larger subject. For example, the bark on a tree trunk, a window on a building, or the head and shoulders of a person or animal. When it comes to macro photographs, they're often in a lot more detail. So it's often a small or minute subject photographed either at life size or larger than life size. When it comes to close-ups, you can pretty much achieve them with any lens in your kit bag. Whereas with macro photographs, you often need a specific macro lens, which allows you to focus a lot closer to the subject that you're photographing. If you're really interested in getting into macro photography in a bit more detail, pardon the pun, then I really would recommend you investing in a good macro lens. Simply because when you use a macro lens it allows you to get a lot closer to your subject, therefore making the photograph a lot sharper and better in quality. That's not to say though that you can't achieve macro results with just a standard lens. I will often use my 50mm prime lens to focus as close as I can and then crop into the subject once I've made the photograph. The beauty of prime lenses is that they allow you to crop in a lot deeper than you would be able to with a zoom lens. So if you haven't got a macro lens and you just see something that's worth capturing really close up, then try out a prime lens and crop into that specific detail. When it comes to setting the camera for both close-up and macro photographs, one of the most common mistakes people make is to open their aperture wider than they should do. That's often because they think that for this shot I would like a shallow depth of field, I would like my subject in sharp focus and everything else falling out of focus. And the way to do this would usually be to open their aperture as far as it will go. But when it comes to focusing closer than you would normally do, that has the effect of emphasising a shallow depth of field. And you will often notice that if you open your aperture as wide as it will go for a macro or close-up photograph, then some of your subject will fall out of focus and it just doesn't look right. So the trick when it comes to both close-up and macro focusing and getting that depth of field absolutely spot on is to close your aperture down a bit more than you think you should. So for macro photographs, you're looking at anything from around 5.6 all the way up to f8, which you would usually associate with landscape photos. And for close-up photographs, around f3.5 to f4.6 usually does a decent job.
Another technical issue that a lot of people who are new to macro and close-up photography encounter is getting the subject in focus in the first place. Sometimes you can't even take a photograph because the camera won't let you because you can't focus. Now the reason for that is often that you are too close to your subject. By moving away then your autofocus should be able to kick in again. But you'll often find when you get to that point then you're too far away to get the photograph that you would like anyway. The way our camera's autofocus works is by latching on to contrast points. And often in close-up and macro photographs there aren't enough of those or there are too many of those to latch onto and for your camera to define exactly where your subject is within the frame. So the best way to get around it is by changing your camera or your camera's lens to manual focus. You can then use the focusing ring on the lens to spin it until you see through your own vision that your subject is perfectly in focus. That way you should be able to focus a bit closer to your subject and get your subject in focus with every shot that you make. Composing close-up and macro photographs can also pose quite a challenge in itself. You might initially think it's rather easy because you've just got a single clear focal point within your frame, but it's not quite as straightforward and easy as that most of the time. One of my top tips is to always look to the background, because the background to any photograph is equally as important as the subject itself. If you have something that distracts or leads the eye away from your focal point, even if the background is out of focus, it's going to completely throw the composition off kilter and draw attention away from the thing that you want people to look at. Another one of my top tips is if you're photographing the close-up of a flower, for example, that's drooping slightly to the left-hand side, then place it on the right-hand third, so as it leans over it leads people's eye into the photograph. If you placed it on the opposite side and drooping out of the frame, then it would leave the other side of the frame completely superfluous to requirement, and also have the effect of leading people's eye out of the frame, rather than to that wonderful subject that you've picked out. If you're photographing a really simple subject, like a, a mushroom or toadstool that's of a, a very symmetrical form, then don't be afraid to place that in the middle of the photograph, because again, it's a clear focal point and it's not drooping either way, so therefore draw people's attention to it by positioning it centrally. Often with macro and close-up photography, it's not a case of following the rule of thirds, but thinking about the shape and scale of the subject that you are actually photographing. The last point that I'd like to make when it comes to composing your close-up and macro photographs is making sure that you've got a lot of contrast between your subject and everything else around it in the frame. If you're photographing a ladybird on a tree stump or rock, for example, this can be quite easy because it's a red dot in amongst a rather more dull background. But when it comes to photographing the close-up of an autumn leaf in an autumnally coloured woodland, then you'll often find that the tones and also colours are often very similar. So it pays to look around for different angles where you can photograph your subject against a different coloured backdrop or a slightly darker toned backdrop. That way you'll draw people's eye more to your subject rather than, like we said earlier on, letting their eye wander to something a bit more distracting in the background of the shot. Hopefully this video has given you the impetus and inspiration you need to go out and continue to improve your macro and close-up photography skills. In a moment I'll share with you some of the photographs that I've taken myself on my little wander today. But in the meantime, if you'd like to place some other aspects of your photography under closer scrutiny, then why not subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already, for more hints and tips videos like this, and to find out some more unique and inspirational Yorkshire photography locations. And don't forget to hit the bell reminder to be reminded every time we post a new video. Even better, you could join us on one of our Yorkshire Photo Walks, which are practical tuition sessions out in the field. 
check out yorkshirephotowalks.com for our latest schedule. You can also keep up to date with all of our latest news and photo walk photographs on Instagram and Facebook by following at Photo Walks Yorks. As I said, I hope this has encouraged you to get out with your camera and try out more close-up and macro photographs. I hope to see you again very shortly, but until then, thank you very much for watching.